This program is designed to provide general information with regards to the subject matters covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, sponsors, or station are engaged in rendering any specific and personal, medical, financial, legal, counseling, professional service, or any advice. You should seek the services of competent professionals before applying or trying any suggested ideas. It's Brian, Sebastian, movie reviews and more. All I can say is this is going to be an interesting and fun show as usual. Because guess what? I'm in Vegas. I'm outside. Anything could happen. Terry Marie got stuck. Got to take her mom to the hospital. Uh, Gia is right now still on the set. Uh, Stroll shot a problem early this morning. And you know what? It's all about just getting anything done. So here we are live on K4HD TV and radio podcasting iHeartRadio, everything around the world. And so we have Tosh from Miami, Florida, locally Tosh, and we can't wait to see her video. I'm going to let her talk about it. And we have Rachel's Recipes, Chef Rachel's Recipes from Houston, Texas. So I can't wait to see what she has today. And on whatever drink she has, I need a double. And it's good to have Roxy here. And I think Adam popped in, if I'm seeing correctly. So that's a good thing. So let's do this. Tosh, let's have you start off first, and then we're going to go to Adam, if that's it. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another show of movie reviews and more. The greatest show to watch on Tuesdays. Okay. <laughs> um, all the way from Miami. Uh, wow. There's a lot to talk about today, Brian. There's a lot of exciting things happening today. Like today, I just released the trailer for my new music video coming out on Friday, this Friday. And I'm pumped. It's a, it, I've been getting really good feedback and people are excited. And that's what I love to hear. You know, people excited about what you're doing, your music, your product. I know we're going to see it later on in the show today. We're going to see the trailer of what I posted today. But yeah, it's been a fun, fun time creating this music video. This week is full of birthdays. On Thursday's my mom's birthday. Tomorrow's my boyfriend's birthday and my best friend's birthday. So there's a lot going on this week, Brian, a lot going on. Well, that's a good thing. And then we're going to go back to your video later, but let's go to this young man because he has a lot of interesting things going on. Let's see what he's talking about. If his connection is strong there, did we lose him? Nothing surprises me. We're getting ready to go into <laughs> surprise me. All right, so Rachel's recipe. What did you make today? Let's see what you have. Okie dokie. Um, so every week, um, I love to make something special for you guys. And today, um, I've made a seared salmon with a um, gorgeous salad. Lots of stuff from the garden that I could grab, like peppers and the, um, but you see, there's, um, got everything's in there. Hey, in fact, I posted the video if you're interested in seeing how I made this salmon. It's on Rachel Roberts Recipes and you can make it at home yourself. Mm. I make I salmon all the time. It's, yeah, it's so good for you. My doctor, he's like a hundred years old and he says to me all the time, if you eat your salmon, you'll live forever. So, <laughs> <laughs> and and I said, what about yeah. What about if I'm drinking and I'm eating the salmon? And he's like, well, <laughs> you just don't drink too much. I'm like, okay, for breakfast, we're going to make this kind of cocktail. <laughs> this is my, um, this is a key lime mint ranch water, big in Texas wow. ranch water, which is um, Topo Chico. Um, this is a Hera Buddha. I love Topo Chico. Yes, right? Well, that's, that's uh, you know, ranch water. Have you ever heard of ranch water? Oh, my God. So I have a crazy story about that. Um, so I'm a bartender. And um, the other day, this couple came in and he's like, oh, can I get some ranch water? And I was like, uh, you mean water? <laughs> he's like, no, ranch no, water, no. tequila and, and soda. I think it was soda water or something. And, and I was like. 
Wow, yeah. that was the first time I ever heard. I thought you were playing a joke on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we need it from the ranch. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, oh, and then uh, oh. this is a Hera, Hera, no. Uh, oh, Herradura. Here we go. I want to say it like Herradura. It's too much. <laughs> my, my Mexican friends come in, they're like, okay, slow down, girl. Anyway, good stuff. You add a little Topo Chico and fresh lime and then mint from your garden because I know you're just like me growing mints and everything else too, right? Everybody? So yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got Adam. So this is all from who we were using more. We have one we had emergency today. Gia's on the set working and stuff like that. So I'm glad we got you back at Connection. Talk about what you've been doing and why you're here because you got a lot of interesting things going on. Cool. Okay. So first of all, can you hear me? <laughs> is it breaking up mm -hmm. or is it good? Okay. It's good. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I had like a problem. So I'm like sitting there staring at you and you're talking about the ranch water. I'm like, this is so interesting. And then you tell me like about the, uh, now you're breaking up. What? Oh, okay. So can you, can you hear me? You're Sorta. good now. <laughs> Okay, maybe, maybe if I talk slower, then <laughs> it won't break up. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm a, you know, I had a theater company. I still operate my theater company. We're putting on a couple of cool shows, but right now I'm working on a film. I'm uh, doing modeling. I got into some magazine recently. And, um, yeah, I mean, I spend a lot of my time just writing. I live in New York City, and um, yeah, we're going to be traveling, actually. We're, we're working on this film, doing a demo for it. And um, I'm really, really excited to show people online. So I got a lot of, you know, stuff going on in that regard. You're gorgeous, Adam. How old are you? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. How old um, are you? you know, I don't know. Totally missed it. I know, right? Like, Tell us like, again. Like, Tell us again. He looks like a young Leonardo DiCaprio. Right? Yeah. Hey, Adam, I um, feel for you because I'm going through exactly what I know, you right? I was like, I wish we had a ca like captions, subtitles. <laughs> right. Brian, you definitely feel for him. I, I've gone through that, Adam. So we I want to know how old you are. And what you're getting ready to go on the road with in, in New York? Okay, so my age. I'm gonna give you an age range. I play anywhere from 18 to 30 years old. <laughs> Put it like that. Wow. Right. Is that okay? Is it okay if I keep a secret? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, we all like to that's keep secrets. Like, that's a, that's a good favorite. range, though. Right. I mean, anywhere from 15 to, right? to 48. That's why I was, <laughs> somewhere in between, that. but really not. Yeah. Yeah. You know, actually, um, James Dean, before he passed, he was working on um, Giant, and he was playing an older version of a character himself. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, I kind of feel like that would be really cool to play somebody that's like 60 years old, kind of dye your hair, go through the whole thing, and then also play the young version of yourself, too. Yeah, right. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Wait, so he reminds me he reminds me of a um a early John Bon Jovi that rocker. <laughs> oh my god, you nailed it, Brian. You just nailed the it. Through the, through the window and just jump on the table and he was Kevin Bacon footloose. Oh yeah, do that for us, Adam. <laughs> we couldn't oh. see it though because his picture is like frozen now. <laughs> Dang it, internet. It happened. Yeah, right? yeah I know. Indeed. So, uh, mm -mm. Well, here's here's the thing. I, I know exactly what that feels like going through that. And my heart goes out to you because I thought that was going to happen to me today. <laughs> so, <laughs> as it goes, since you're in New York, we're having solar flares too. So, this is not uncommon. Everybody's been having stuff today. So, Tosh, go back to your video, and then hopefully we'll get a better connection with Adam. Go. 
Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so the name of my song is called Suéltate. It comes out this Friday at 8 p.m. Um, you can pre-save it if you have like Spotify or iTunes or Amazon Music. Uh, you can pre-save it. You can go to my website or um, you can go to my social media at Vocally Tosh and you can find the pre-save link. So that would be really, really awesome for anyone who's watching. And this is a very huge summer song, summer Brazilian funk song. Um, it's very um, kind of like super woman empowerment. And it's a, it's a fun song. I had a great time writing it and uh, a really fun time producing it and you know doing the whole video portion of it i hired like osuna dancers like i went all out for this video and i'm i'm excited for you guys to see the trailer it's it's going to be i feel like this is like my my point every time i take out a song is that each song is a hundred times better than the last one when it comes to quality uh the video production so i'm i'm pumped about this one i'm very proud i'm even dancing in this one like it's it was awesome you got this one one part that i love with your like you know you did something like this oh yeah and, and i like, did like oh, a little wink yep little that was it <laughs> yeah that's so, the money shot right there i think we got a good portion of adam now so adam did we get you back okay um yeah i know i'm ruining oh my it. god <laughs> yes he moves i'm he moves. <laughs> i'm working on it yeah i don't know why maybe it's the rain i guess it's 20 it's 2022 i think like uh they're suggesting that we all go into the metaverse but i still can't get a proper inter internet connection <laughs> so <laughs> i don't think that worked out great for me no, you sound good right now. So what's been happening in the modeling world for you? What have you been, what have you been booking? Because I, I'm glad that you're here, for one. And I know you've been, you got a lot of stuff going on. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so it's like, uh, in modeling, I'm working to, or um, I've got a couple different brands that I really like that I've sort of been talking to. And I've been, in, I've been doing a lot of um, concepts and a lot of like, sort of like building narratives with photographers. And um, we have been getting into some really awesome magazines. So I was in a, um, a magazine called Rebel Mag, which I really, really liked. It was so cool. We've got a couple more coming up. Style Cruise is one of them is coming up. But um, as well as doing my modeling and working with these different photographers, I mean, I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to Europe to work with another photographer that I worked with before. But we're doing a lot of, like, um, a lot of video stuff. So I wrote some things for my film. And I'm going to be going out and I'm going to be shooting some sort of demos for the film. So I think you'll also see a lot of um, a lot of video type like fashion modeling and stuff coming out, too. I think that's great. So I think it's you're really talented with what you have. I've seen some things uh, which I really like what you're doing. Talk about that, that more behind the scenes stuff that you do, because you're in front of the camera. But also you seem to be very creative behind it, too. Yeah. I help it, you know, actually, like, a lot of the times I wish that I could just, um, you know, let go of a lot of things and just be in different people's products. But I become up with these ideas. And whenever I see different photographers and their style, I sort of say, hey, you know, these are like how you guys sort of started comparing me to different actors and things. I said, I do like those styles. I like the classic American. I like the kind of like the actor studio. I grew up around a lot of that stuff. And I, and I came to New York to sort of work with those people. And I became mentored in it. So I started started reading a lot of different plays. And then in my mind, I would always like really connect to these characters and sort of see what was like the ambiance of the play, what was beyond the words, what was beyond the text. And so when I see photographers and things, I just kind of see like their different styles, their different moods. And I'll do the same thing with clothing brands. So a lot of stuff that I like to um, wear, I like classic things. I like to even get a lot of vintage things. And, and I sort of get inspired by a lot of older movies and then I sort of meet up with these photographers and I say, okay, I really like your style. I mean, I wanna pass you a couple of ideas, is that cool? Sometimes people are like, yeah, sometimes not really. And then a lot of the times we'll just say, okay, so I really like the mood of this, like, uh, let's say like the outsiders or like Francis Ford Coppola's outsiders or something. And then I'll sort of pass on these ideas and somebody will say, okay, cool. Let's, um, let's run out to this location. We've got this uh, stylist that wants to work on these things. And then we kind of, um, what would you say? We sort of improv it. So I think a lot of it sort of comes together. 
when it's like behind the scenes and then what you're actually doing when it comes to modeling. I don't know if everybody does it like that, but that's how I became interested in modeling. And that's why I really like doing it. I think that's something that makes my like modeling and my photos a little bit different than the approach that other people have. Did you start modeling first exactly. or did you, did you do, were you interested in film first? Which one was kind of like where you first started in? You know, I was from a small town in North Carolina. I was in the middle of nowhere. Wow. I was like, any of the shit I was probably like, yeah, it was probably like a day late. Whereas like everybody, you know, is like in New York, you come, you're like in the hub of everything. So when I was out there, um, I knew that I wanted something different. I knew that, like, um, I think a lot of people get trapped in their way of thinking, get trapped in, like, um, everything's very sensitive, you know, in the world. And I knew that I wanted to break out of this, uh, a lot of problems that I was going through in things. And so I knew that I had a niche. I knew that I had, like, something that people were looking at me. And that was something that was either challenging people or something that people would really want to like relate to and i felt like i could bring a lot of people up with my charisma with the way that i acted or the way that i was sort of like looked so i kind of embodied that confidence around people and then a lot of my life was being challenged so i would just kind of like take the will you accept like these words that are being given to you do you accept this paradigm or are you gonna you know see yourself in in like a grander mind's eye so when it goes back to like, did the modeling or the, did I go into filmmaking first? I mean, I saw films on TV that allowed me to like see how I was. And I think that I could really relate to a lot of stories. And I think music does a lot of things like that too. It's like, it can really bring you out of your situation. So I was inspired by a lot of these older actors and a lot of these stories and the writers who would write the stories and, and they would feel like, I was like, this is me. So it started with me like as an escape, you know, as seeing like how and what I could do to like share my philosophy and what I wanted to do. And, you know, I knew I was, I knew I was modeling. I kind of shut away from doing it. And then I was putting on some theater shows and New York City went into lockdown. So I was like, you know what, let me, let me seriously do modeling. Not like just do some shots and things like with other photographers really like the way that I look. But let me like do a narrative. Let me do a three look shot. Let me do something that's like can share the same ideas that I have. So the last like couple of modeling shoots did, I think we named one of them, we named it American Essence. And we named the other one, um, we named it Fervent Passion. So I think like, I know that's a long winded answer, you know, but I think it's all just a part of my journey. Cool. Then you studied uh, method acting. Any? You... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Okay. I, you want to hear about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what it said. I well, I took acting many years ago. I took. I think I studied. It was the uh, Meisner technique. Nice. Yeah, under a guy that came Meisner. to Texas. Yeah, but he's in New York now. CC Courtney. Anyway, that's I don't know if you've cool. ever heard of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've studied a little bit of Meisner before. It's a lot of the, the repetition and um, mm -hmm. Meisner, like, like a lot of the um, core practice and like kind of warming up is people were sort of like repeat the lines. So it's good because you realize, mm -hmm. are you really listening? But then when you kind of get into Meisner and you're repeating it a lot with each other, you mm -hmm. kind of transcend into this point mm -hmm. where you feel like you're actually in the moment. So I really mm -hmm. like that about Meisner. Um, mm -hmm. method acting, the way that I came to method acting was, uh, I had a lot of stuff that went on in my past and I, and I wanted to sort of like use my style, but a lot of the actors that I had grown up, uh, that I said that I saw on screen, I, I liked the Godfather. I liked a lot of like, you know, these sort of Martin Scorsese and Francis Ford Coppola and all stuff like that. And then I realized as I came into New York, I looked at all of the different studios. I studied a little bit at HB Studios, um, which was like Uta Hagen's technique. And then I studied a little bit at um, Stella Adler with the Stella Adler technique. I liked that because I really like Marlon Brando. And he talks about bravado. But then when I got to, you know, fully study, I finally saved up a lot of money. And I was like, OK, I can finally pay to go to the school. And I went to Strasbourg and it was really like... Um, I think it was like just being, it was like the perfect place for me because in a lot of ways, I was just reading Stanislavski. I was reading all of these books 
And um, mm-hmm. I ended up studying with the head of the actor's studio, Lyle Kessler. And he wow. was like, um, yeah, he was like a protege of Lee Strasberg and his friend, he was friend of like Robert De Niro and mm-hmm. Al Pacino and all these guys. And I just felt like the characters that those guys were writing and everybody that came out of the sort of method acting kind of like mm-hmm. wing of it, I felt like they were guys that have really trying to show, you know, a realistic life situation. And it was people who had been through a lot. So I just kind of naturally, you know, mm-hmm. like fell into that sort of circle of doing it. But I think my approach to acting is, you know, a lot of different combinations of things. So do you use what, like the feelings, like if you, when you have to do be sad, do you think of something that's sad? Is that is that how that works? Sometimes, yeah. You know, it's like, it's if you can really, sometimes you, I think they said like uh, Bobby Lewis, uh, um, mm-hmm. he was a great director. And he was a lot of the actor studio people. And he wrote, I can't remember the book that he wrote it in, but he was talking about, I think it was called the Players Theater or something like that. But he was saying pretty much like, you know, it's it's almost like the technique is there for what you need it. And sometimes Mm -hmm. you have a lot of things that go on in your life and uh, you can kind of uh, recognize those emotions and you can say, okay, here's a moment in my life that, I can fall back on or something that I can like, I've been repressing or something that I'm really holding inside of me that I don't share with people. How can I tap into that? But then sometimes I've been on set or I've been in a film and like I did one recently and they were sort of like, okay, this is your dying mother and you're going through this situation. And as I was um, like doing it and I was just hearing what she was saying and I was just kind of like letting myself be vulnerable in the situation, then mm-hmm. those kind of emotions just kind of like, I was they just more out. able to, yeah, I was just able to yeah. relax and like, you know, it just kind of came, so. Yeah. Sort of both. You had a lot of happen also in your past too. Is this where you are now? And, and, and then you pass and talk, we've all gone through some difficult things. This is what you're kind of talking about, right? Oh, yeah. So what was the first, what was the first word that you just said? About difficult things coming from where you came from in your past. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it drove me to, you know, want to show people my art and want to be an artist. And then at the same time, you know, I think it gave me a lot of things to draw from and it made me a stronger and more understanding person, you know? So I'm, I'm glad that I went through a lot of those things. You know, I was, I was I was living on my own. I was homeless since I was like 15 years old. No so way. I, oh yeah. So you know, I had my parents had me when they were like 18 or 19 years old, and then um, you know, I thought it was very cool because my my dad was into rock and roll and my mom was uh, kind of into like hippie stuff. And then as I got like they separated a lot, and then I ended up really being on my own. So it's, I was kind of on my own since like. Yeah, I was on my own since I was like 15. I was living with my friends. I was living with strangers at times too. And I would live on my friend's couches or sometimes sleep next to my friend's bed or or I would like sleep on a couch of somebody that I didn't really know that well. But those things taught me like not to really judge people. And I I never would have judged them at that time. But looking back, I can see how we're all so divided. Mm -hmm. And I'm so Mm -hmm. grateful for like having to go through a lot of- Yeah, a lot of struggle, but then be able to see all these beautiful people that, you know, are just, uh, it's not like they're, you know, writing books or they're not doing anything crazy, you know, but they're just humble, normal people that will make Mm -hmm. you a meal and be nice to you. And um, I think that's the most beautiful thing in life, you know, as far Mm -hmm. as like, art is great, you know, but, um, you know, I, I just hope that like, we never, we never lose that connection. I hope that there's still people out there doing that stuff for other people. Oh, heck yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, it was a lot because in North, because where I was from in North Carolina too, um, a lot of people rely on each other when you don't have a lot of money or anything Mm -hmm. going on, sort of people share a lot of their resources Mm -hmm. and everything. And so it's like a tight community, but you know, everything is so integrated that it feels like everybody's kind of looking, looking out for each other or that's why I feel like, you know, people in the South are so cordial and nice, but we had a lot of like, um, being on my own was tough because you don't have really much guidance. You don't have anywhere to really go. You know, I was working minimum wage jobs and things like that. So that was like seven or $8, you know, in North Carolina. 
and it was really nothing. And it was like um, a lot of people that I was friends with, uh, you try to act tough, especially in school, especially when you don't have parental figures around you. So I was like trying to, you know, fight everybody all the time. I was hanging out with people that were in gangs. I was hanging out with just, you know, with people and it was more innocent than I thought it was. And it was like so popular and it was so many people uh, doing all this. And this a lot of times would be people that would let me sleep on their couch, people that were actually just genuinely kind of people. It wasn't like they were out to hurt everybody every day, but it's like you have to wear this chip on your shoulder all the time when you feel like you're being attacked or you feel like, you know, you want to assert yourself or you want to have like a meaningful life and you want to be strong and, you know, maybe even dominant in, in a situation where you don't feel like there's much really out there. So when I left, you know, it was kind of it was kind of like a different perspective because I kind of saw a lot of those same people belong to like the revolving doors of uh, like the court system or a lot of people get into drugs and a lot of people be very depressed and a lot of those mm -hmm. people died or they're in jail. Yeah, for a they long died. Time. Or they stay so in the same like, loop. It's a big problem. Yeah. It's hard, you know, it's, it's really sad to see because my perspective has grown so much over life and it's not been that long, you know, but I'm really blessed because, you know, I, I believe in God and, you know, I just, I pray all the time. And I think that there's been something that uh, showed me, like, even if it's philosophically, you want to think about things in life, but it was something bigger than myself, something like that I could see that was, um, that was something that was going to say, okay, well, right now is hard, but I know that later, you know, that I can work towards something being better. I know that things can be better. So um, I don't think a lot of people have, that takes a lot, a lot of courage, you know what I mean? And I think mm -hmm. like a lot of people can only handle so much stress in their life. And mm -hmm. that might not be an excuse, you know, for people, but I think that um, it's gotten very hard and it might even be harder now, you know, for people to uh, to get out of those situations or to even see their situation as, you know, but anyway. Well, where's your motivation coming from now? Um, you know, it's a lot of things. I feel I feel like uh, blessed, like I said, because I've been given this um, I've been given this meaning. I've been given this rope and I feel like filmmaking and I feel like acting and modeling. I felt like that truly saved my life. And I think in a lot of ways, I want to give that back to a lot of other people. But I also feel like I'm, I'm moving with um, a grand purpose. And that might sound, you know, silly to different people. Or whatever that is but you know in a way i feel like that i've been called to do something and i think that um you know i it, it drives me and it and it like fills my moments of when i get distracted on normal regular things of like going out and 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 thinking about all these petty stuff in life i i really can come back and and put my passion and be like okay i think that i i feel invigorated i feel like um motivated and i feel um, like this is giving me all of this energy to be able to stay up all night and to be able to, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a madman about it. Like I really, I'm not <laughs> relentless, you know, I just sort of, I, I see what I, I want to do. And a lot of people, I don't think really understand that. And even people that are in, um, you know, the industry, as far as producers of things, I just kind of have to realize that maybe people don't see what I'm doing and maybe people think that I'm a little bit wild for wanting to be so um, involved and ambitious and, a, and maybe even a perfectionist at times. But uh, for me, I just want to, I want to give back and I want to see the world be a better place. You know? So with that, I want to see Tasha's video be a better place. Because... <laughs> Let's see about this. And Adam, tell us what you think of this because she she she's come a long way. I'm so proud of Tasha what she's doing. All right, Tosh, take it away. Set up your video. Let's see what it is. Let's oh see that. man, thought anyway. maybe shed a tear here, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Roxy's gonna play it, but I'm a, I mean I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. Um, the whole music video is a whole game changer. Honestly, I think it's the best one that I've done, and it's 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 a story. It's a fun story. Um, it is like I I don't know if you had heard Adam. I think you might have dropped 
when I was talking about it, but it's like an empower, it's a song for woman empowerment, you know, for people who are like stuck in like toxic relationships. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to take care of yourself first. It's called Sueltate. So it's like, let go. Um, I'm a Latin pop singer. So all my songs are in Spanish. Uh, but this one is a Brazilian song. It's a good, it's a really fun beat. And you know, I'm, I'm let's Roxy, let's show this trailer it comes out this Friday. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> That's exciting. Ghostbusters! Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you. Thank that you. That looks it's so a- good. That was awesome. Oh my god, wait until you see like the whole video. I no, when I first saw it, it. Bro, when I first saw it, I was like, holy, that's me. Like, what? like it looks good and it sounds good and it look, and it's like what I envisioned. So I'm I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of it. Um, Are some of those you people should- your friends or is it all people you hired or so the two dancers are like mm-hmm. professional dancers. They dance for Osuna and like mm-hmm. a lot of uh, Nikki Jam, Nati Natasha. They, they dance for a lot of the big reggaeton artists. So I hired them, but the, the extras in the back, those are like my friends, my boyfriend awesome. is in there. Like I found this like <laughs> random stranger in the beach and I was like, hey, you wanna like <laughs> be part of my video? So it was, it's fun. Yeah. I. I I'm happy that I have like, you know, a group of friends and, you know, a a nice circle that supports and believes in what I want to do and in my vision. And, you know, everybody's always happy to like, you know, hop on and help um, as much as they can. So, yeah, that's uh, I'm excited. You know, eight o'clock Friday, it's going to be. I Where? will be blasting that everywhere. It's going to be on YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. Well, the music video is going to be on YouTube, released on YouTube. But the single will be on all streaming platforms. Um, you can find me as Natasha Rumbos. That's a, it's so funny because the other day this guy was like, so is Rumbos your artistic name? And I'm like, no. <laughs> It's my actual, you know, last name. Like, you know, Rumbos Rumba. Rumba is like very like, you know, like um, party and like, you know, very hype. And I was like, no, that's actually my last name. So it sounds very perfect for like a singer. I like that. Exactly. You know, a lot of people be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, Rumbos, Rumbos. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) So, so Adam, what do you think of? how nutty Tosh is because she's really funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I mean, did you see that video? Um, yeah, that looks great. I mean, honestly, like I love energy. So I, I think that that's cool. Also, I think it's cool. You just drag somebody off of the, um, off the beach to, <laughs> to be in the video. I think that's a, that's a, that's a very filmmaker type of thing to do. Yeah. That's really cool. I, I mean, wish I could. I was like, I they wish... were right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 I broke up and I, I started cutting you off. I was going to say, I wish that I could roll my R's like that. I wish that I could roll my R's. <laughs> <properly>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, takes a, it takes a little bit of practice for the R's. <laughs> yeah. I, ro- I, I sometimes everything. get my tongue twisted. I sometimes get my tongue twisted saying stuff. To keep everything in shape. So what do you think about eating clean and drinking dirty which is what rachel does adam do you drink um yeah a little bit um something yeah i drink but not not a lot not a lot Mm -hmm. but clean you know i i I eat clean eat dirty (laughs) yeah i try to eat clean i was gonna say do you you dirty or clean are you are you um i would say like i only like things that are that are like organic or not organic, but like made naturally. Um, yeah, I don't really. Mm-hmm. I don't really trust. Of my garden. Yeah, I want to do that. That's great. I want to have a garden. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's, I, that's um, how I get inspiration. Yeah. I've got two ivy plants, and um, I water them every two weeks, and uh, <laughs> and they're, they're doing pretty good, <laughs> though. So Where are they? We don't. I tried see to them. have a. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna get them. They're 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 sleeping right now. Um, yeah, I tried to have a bonsai plant one time, and that was 
uh, I shouldn't be allowed to have plants, to be honest. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Survival of the fittest. That's the way I look at it. I know. I mean, I right. have to do something. Mm -hmm. So, Rachel, talk but, about this. Talk about okay. what you've been doing with your fundraiser, what you've been mm -hmm. doing to get to Tennessee, and all these new people, because your views keep going up now. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so one of the things that Brian has invited me to, and he's got his head wrapped around it, it that I'm, you know, he was so optimistic. You're going, you're going, it's going to happen, is this thing coming up in Nashville, and it's in May, um, like about May 18th, is, it, is that right? May 18th through the 22nd, 23rd? Um, women in Film and Television, and um, I'm really excited about going out there. I started a fundraiser to raise money to get out there, and, you know, I think when you had invited me, I was just like, okay, you know, right, right, but then the more, you know, you just kept saying it over and over and over, you're going to go, it's going to happen, and telling it the whole world, you're such a positive person person, Brian, and it made it, you made it happen. You got me believing it. You got the world hearing about it. And then I started that fundraiser. And within a week, we've raised all the money that was, you know, we wanted to, to raise to do it. So yeah, today the, it, we went over the, you know, the mark of, of the goal we, we set and, and thanks to a bunch of people that watched me on social media and stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you. If whoever's out there watching, I want to thank you and thank you, Brian. Thank you for getting for for inviting me. I'm really really excited about meeting everybody. Tashi, you gonna be there? Oh yeah. yes, yes I am. I haven't bought my airplane ticket, but I will be. Oh, there. I know. <laughs> I haven't either. Every day I look at the, the the prices and they're going up. So we really should do it soon. Yeah. It seems like I was going to ask because is there something specifically apart from the film festival happening that weekend? Because only that weekend, the airplane tickets are crazy for Nashville. So there's I was like, no, what is happening? There's, there's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just what it is. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was like, because like, the weekend before is only like a one, 150 to go, but that weekend specifically is $500 for a round trip. And I'm like, holy shit. Hey, what's going on over there? Like a fucking rodeo or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why you, you should go start a fundraiser. Just, okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, Adam, yeah. Adam. Adam, you're invited. We always invite our people to come because I'm putting everybody together so they can just showcase their brands and what they do. And and I like what you do. So and you're fun. Wow, thank you so much. Yeah, that sounds that sounds amazing. I might I might be there. I'm gonna have to check that out. That sounds so cool. So Adam, to meet the whole crew. And are you What'd still you connected with all these people, Adam? That that like you know you knew from you know home. Any of those people that right. you were like on the couch and stuff? Do they know where you are? What did they? What do all these people think now that you've you know <laughs> you've made it big time? I mean, yeah, I I talk to them. I talk to them. I, I think uh, I'm still, I put all that stuff out of my mind. You know, I try, I try to encourage people that I'm like friends with or people that I grew up with to, you know, like pursue their passions Follow and pursue dream, the things they yeah. want. Yeah. So, I mean, I always try to tell, I've lost, some of my friends, it's really cool when um, some people that I know that I've like was growing up with, they, they message me or they'll leave a comment online and they'll say, you know, like I watch them doing their music stuff and they say, you know, oh, you inspired me to be doing it. I'm like, no, I really didn't, you know, like actually. But I, I feel like it's really cool because I, I still do talk to a lot of people that I grew up with. And I mm -hmm. talk to um, I, I keep up with people. I keep tabs on people. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I still I feel like at heart, I'll always want to like, uh, you know, enjoy kind of being being like just uh i like being low-key so i appreciate your parents my must be so that, are proud. Still, that are still out there holding it down oh thanks um yeah, yeah. you know like i'm really close to my grandma i love my grandma so much so um i think they're i think they could be proud and you know that's that's a nice thing but yeah i hope in a lot of ways it inspires people and then i think over time you know it could be something that maybe people can say like okay, I really want, want to do this, or I want to, um, I don't know, I'm just like, just, you know, I'm here, <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm just, I'm just happy that, you know, to be pursuing the things that I want in life, and 
So I'm yeah. so yeah, that's so awesome. I don't you're know following if they see your me dream, you're doing it. I'm imagining you went out to New York with just like a few dollars and like you made it happen. That's so cool. You know, yeah, I think a lot of it was people, a lot. You know, they, yeah. Go on. Well, I, oh yeah, I was just saying, like, you know, I think um it's that sometimes you put yourself in these situations that are bigger than you and you might be like wow i am so screwed right now and then like um <laughs> you know the world finds a way to to support you and and the universe and whatever you want to call it you know it's just like there's 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 god there's always something there to to guide you and, and it's like even when i felt like oh this really isn't gonna work out or how am i gonna do this um the 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 more mature I've gotten in my art and the more like um, experience I've gotten put on productions and doing things, I sort of just trust the way that things work out. And that gives me a lot of peace, you know? That's so, so cool. Who um who motivated you to go for what you were doing now? Who was that one person, would you say? Was it your grandmother? Hmm. No, I, I'd say... um. You know, I wanted, to, I wanted to, I dealt with a, I dealt with a lot of small-minded people. I dealt with a lot of things that were, I felt like we were like constantly trying to tell you the way that the world was, trying to tell you how to think, who to be, what you are. And I think that was kind of motivated in a lot of ways where I just, as I was in these things, and I, I didn't want to conform to some idea of myself that I didn't really believe in. And so, you know, that kind of gave me a lot of motivation as well as seeing people on TV and seeing these um, actors. I mean, I really like, I, I talk about a lot, but I saw like, you know, Goodwill Hunting and I was just thinking like, oh, this feels like my life and this feels like my knucklehead friends and things. And I think a lot of the times it was like, even some people that would be best friends with me would say, oh, you're not, you're not gonna, um, you'll be back, you know, or something like that whenever I left. And, and I was just like, no, I won't. Like, I just knew it. You know, I just felt like that. That's not me. And I think that a lot of people go through personal things. And um, that, that's like, you know, you're challenged a lot by the world. But I think our potential is so infinite. I mean, you know, getting over that stuff is like, it's a lot, you know, I think we're constantly dealing with it. So Roxy, he reminds so, me of also John Cougar Mellencamp. And the Stray Cats from Stray Cat Stress. Remember that, Rachel? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Well, I looked yeah. up your pictures. Man, you take some good shots, too. I know. I was literally that. looking wow. at his uh, Instagram profile. And your, your pictures, like, look like could, they could be on the cover of Vogue. Like, they're very yeah, edgy. Right. Like, there's a lot, like, that that speaks in each of your pictures. So, yeah. I mean, and you know how to work able that to be, camera. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. So you are you are in the I, I mean, right. You in the, you are in the right. You guys are so kind. I I mean I I really appreciate that. Like that um you know it motivates me and then at the same time I'm just like uh I want to keep going. I want to I want to do more. I want to I want to show you guys more stuff and it's like that's just me trying to to be vulnerable. You know, that's just me trying to to share myself in a way and and try to show this like this way that I feel, you know, is like maybe the way that I think that people are seeing me or, or trying to like, I, I think in a way it's just like, um, thanks, you know, I mean, it's just given me a lot of strength and I, and I really appreciate that you like it. Mm. I'm glad they turn out good. I'm glad they're good shots. <laughs> but I'm glad they're this isn't the opposite. Good. They're like, they're jaw dropping. Okay. They're not, yeah, they are. like, those aren't good pictures. Those are really like really, really amazing pictures. You know, like I find that to be so um, amazing. And I feel like that's such a big thing that, that you can like share that with me and be positive in that way. Because even for myself, I, I don't know if, if how you guys feel about things, but it's like, you know, it's hard to accept for me, maybe like just, positive things like compliment you know the, like just to hear that i'm like i i believe you and i see it and it's like i still want to move forward i want to do more i'm like this is you know but i really i really appreciate you guys saying that it really means a lot to me all right rachel so what do you want to say before we leave we got about four minutes left go ahead 
Okay. Um, you can find me on Rachel Roberts recipes all over social media. And thank you to everybody that made that fundraiser happen. All of you have, um, and the people that are watching, I love, I love you guys. Yeah. Good stuff. Woo. Yeah. I'll be cooking. Wow. Burning too. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What, what, what are you going to make tomorrow? Oh, I have, um, this week we're doing uh, burgers. So outside at the grill every day, I love to be, the, the weather here in Texas has been so nice. And, and so when the weather's good, I go outside and I'm at the grill and things are out there every day. So I made some um, buffalo burgers and they were so good last week that all the people that I made them for have been, you know, put in requests for, for more burgers this week. So yeah, really, really and, good. So, and Tosh is burger girl. <laughs> good, right, Tosh? Well, I'm yeah. sorry, what did you say? You said the buffalo burger sounds good, huh? Yes, it does. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I love everything and anything that's food. So I just anything that you make, Rachel, looks so good. Like that seared salmon, that picture that you took, I literally, I felt like I was <laughs> drooling. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good stuff. All right, so, so Tosh, what do you got coming up again? Oh, bueno, Sueltate. Sueltate uh, comes out this Friday um, at 8 p.m. Make sure to pre-save it. Uh, you can visit my website, natasharoombosmusic.com, and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because that is the only way you're going to see that music video, Ooh. which is bomb AF. <laughs> okay, got it. And now you know, and now you know who Pro is, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right, Adam, you get the last word of this. So, what would you cool. say to those people that are looking for inspiration when it comes to you? What would you say to them? Okay. Yeah. You know, um, when I do something, when you do something, what do I want to say? Okay. Wow. This seems like I should really say something serious. Um, don't let anybody, you know, tell you who you are and uh, believe, you know, that you can do whatever you find in your heart and look inside like of, of at yourself and really determine like, you know, what is it that like, you feel like, like what do you feel like you could do if you really couldn't fail in your life? That's what I want to tell people. Do it, do what you think, you know, you can do. So, so this show is all about acting, modeling, cooking, singing. So it's the so it's about doing the art. And that's a really, really good thing because there's a lot of artists that don't get a chance to express what they're doing. They don't get a chance to tell what they're really going through or even talk about their voice. So that's the great exactly. thing about the dream. It's all about them. So we got through this, and I'm really, really happy that mm -hmm. nothing really dropped. Rachel, thank you for what you're doing. Tasha, Cheers. and I can't wait for us to get together in Tennessee. Uh, mm -hmm. Adam, yeah, I will invite you down just like everybody else. You just never know what's going to happen because, you know, you'll be back on again talking about what you do. Roxy, thank you for what you're doing because you had an interesting week and all of a sudden my light goes off. So that must be the cue to end. So <laughs> with that, as I always say, if you see someone without a smile, Please give them one of yours because the world needs it. Have a good night tonight and a better day tomorrow. I'm Brian Sebastian. This is the movie reviews more, and we will see you next week.